Hey guys, Frank Colley. I just wanted to uh, share some information with you real quick uh, regarding a topic that we hear a lot about in our offices, um, and that is ergonomics. So we decided to put together a little presentation regarding ergonomics that we can share with you, uh, with your company, uh, with a friend or family member's place of business or what have you, that can possibly make it a safer environment, a better environment, a more efficient environment, and even a happier environment. Because um, you know, when you're happier, obviously you're more productive and get more work done. So. Um, ergonomics. So exactly what is ergonomics? So ergonomics essentially is the science of work. Okay. It's about more or less fitting jobs and tasks to the employees so that they're safer, they're healthier, they're more comfortable and more productive in their workplace. And like I said, when you're safer, healthier, you're more productive, obviously productivity and output really, really increases. So how does ergonomics more or less affect you as an individual or potentially affect your business? So there's a long-term effect from ergonomics that most workplace injuries are caused by either falls or repetitive movements and bad postures. So most businesses, whether it's conveyor belt lines, whether it's assembly lines, whether it's uh, warehouses, a lot of lifting, twisting, turning, this is the thing that can definitely happen. So practicing good ergonomics can be a great preventative measure for avoiding issues such as headaches, uh, eye issues, neck and back pain or shoulder issues, amongst other things. For people who stand a lot, foot and ankle pain uh, can be a very common thing. So, so there's a couple of risk factors associated with this, so with ergonomics. So one of the big ones, one of the first ones that we see is awkward postures. So awkward postures, obviously, is when you're placing like excessive forces or pressures on joints and muscles and overloading the muscles in ways that you're going to stress them and the tendons and the, the joints that they attach to or go across. So we all have seen the people who might be sitting at their desk like this, or they have that head out like this, that forward head posture and that rounded shoulders. So these are obviously really, really bad things for people. The next thing are things such as like high force or high effort requirements. So an example of something like that would be somebody who works a job who their tasks require a lot of repetitive or heavy forces and loads that they have to lift. Um, somebody I think about, somebody stopped at my house the other day was the UPS driver. So like UPS, FedEx, Amazon deliveries, warehouses, things like that. Um, when you have these repetitive forces on there, naturally it strains and stresses those tissues and can result in pain, aches, and fatigue. So one of the biggest things is we don't want to see someone bending over to pick something up like this, right? There's a proper way to keep your back straight and do the right thing when you're bending down to lift something so that you can maintain your posture and reduce that risk of pain or injury because when you have poor posture and increased workforce loads or uh uh, force requirements, that's going to double your chances of injury. So a third risk factor is kind of along those lines is the repetitiveness of these motions. So you've got poor posture, you have heavy force loads, and then you have repetitions. So many workplaces tasks um, involve cycles and repetitive uh, and are repetitive in nature. So my mom for many years uh, was involved in uh, doing work as a receptionist. So she did tons and tons of typing. And lo and behold, just a couple years ago, she had bilateral carpal tunnel releases. So um, these are things that can happen. So when you have repetitive task repetition, um, and then combined with other risk factors that I mentioned before, such as those high forces and awkward postures, this can contribute to a lot of common workplace injuries, such as back pain, neck pain, knee related issues, shoulder, ankle, etc. Okay, so I, uh, what we could share with you as physical therapists and what we want to do and what I would like to do and our team here at Calling Physical Therapy and Rehab is we want to figure out ways how to improve your ergonomics. So one of the first ones is we can cover things possibly such as something as your sitting, your workstation. 
So is your workstation set up properly for you so that you can reduce the forces and the stresses on your body while you're sitting for six or eight hours at a time? So we like to talk about things such as the 90-90-90 rule, okay? So that your foot and ankle, your knee and your uh, shin and your uh, thigh bone and your hip and your back should all form L's, 90 degree angles, okay? So we don't wanna sit slouched and everything. We wanna sit up nice and tall and make sure we have good posture and good positioning, all right? We wanna make sure that our chair armrests are positioned correctly, that our keyboard is in the right spot and uh, a proper distance from us. Our screen should be located in just such a way so that we have a good positioning, particularly arm's length away, as long as you have um, good vision, because if you have corrective lenses, that might adjust a little bit. And the top line of the screen, so where your screen is, or where you're looking at, should be about eye level. So you're not looking way up and you're not staring way down. So I know a lot of people work on things like kids on their little devices, their necks, oh my gosh, God bless them years from now. So that could be a major issue. Then tips such as with lifting. So first of all, you wanna keep the object in what's called the power zone, which is close to you and in the middle of your core area when possible. Use a better wide stance for balance and stability. You always want to use your legs to lift and always what I call get happy feet. You want to pivot your feet and move them around instead of twisting. That's a bad thing when you're carrying a heavy load. I uh, always want to keep your back straight and you want to try and push your butt cheeks forward so that you kind of lock that in and use your legs and hip power to your advantage. Okay, Especially when you're lowering yourself down or lowering that object down. All right. And obviously have a good firm hold of that that object that you're that you're moving so that you can move it in an efficient manner. And for those things that are big and awkward and what have you, a real simple thing is if you can get someone to help you with that, grab a friend, grab a colleague, grab a coworker to get those things moved. Okay. Standing. Uh, we see people in certain uh, uh, occupations. I know even my, my, I myself, when there are certain days where I'm on my feet and moving a lot and I, I have good shoe wear and try to be conscientious of that. But standing, um, you want to make sure that if possible, uh, hair, hair stylus, something like that. If you're standing, make sure you could change the surface that you're on. Maybe have one of those cushiony mats available um, if, you're, if you're standing on tile all day and that's allowed by your company. Um, take seated breaks when and where possible. So if you can get off your feet and decrease the stresses to those knees, hips, and balls of your feet, that's going to help tremendously. Um, they have what they call those anti-fatigue mats, which is kind of like what I referred to earlier. That's something to consider for standing long-term. Again, if this is feasible and allowable by your employer or as the employer. Uh, and remember, alternate postures, all right? I encourage people, uh, people who sit at a desk for a long time or people who stand for a long time or whatever position they do, please make sure that you're using a timer. Set the timer and use the timer widely. I know there's a lot of people now that have the fancy watches. I do have the Apple Watch and it tells me every once in a while, time to stand up. So uh, what do I do? I stand up um, because it's sometimes smarter than us because we get so engaged in what we're doing that this can lead to issues. So it gives us those reminders that we need. Um, there is certain equipment out there that is available for people uh, regarding their jobs and occupations. Now, we always wanna try to look at a cost savings perspective, but really, if you have to purchase a piece of equipment that's going to help reduce the stresses and the aches and pains that someone might endure on a job day in and day out, let's face it, you spend about a third of your life doing what you're doing. So that's a, a third of your day anyway, maybe not your life, but a third of your day for many, many years of your life doing this. So if you need a piece of equipment that costs $250, that might be expensive, but it's a heck of a lot cheaper than if you need to uh, go for some sort of surgery or have treatment for ongoing weeks and months and, and God forbid years and not get this resolve uh, because you didn't have a, a cheap piece of equipment and spend $10,000 in care. So things such as like a special chair, an ergonomic design chair or desk, uh, a posture belt, a lifting belt, uh, things like that, that anti-fatigue mat that I talked about, certain shoe inserts or soles or shoe wear in general are better than others. So little things like that. And there's tons of other useful tips. I'm just sharing these few just for uh, simplicity's sake on this brief um, video. So 
One of the key things, guys, that I could tell everybody that's super important here, and this goes in general uh, without saying, is that get up and move. Perhaps every 30 minutes or every 60 minutes, get up from your chair, just move around a little bit, you know, do some arm circles, do some side bends, do some twists, march in place, pump those feet up and down, whether you're sitting or standing. Um, just, you gotta move, you gotta stay active, even if it's just for a minute. Trust me when I tell you, your body will thank you, without question. Um, here's some tips uh, just to think about to get up and get moving when you're in the workplace. So, or some tips just for different occupations. So one is you could use a stand-up desk, all right? Those could be very helpful so that some of these desks even alternate and have a little motor on them that could raise up or down or have a little handle to raise them up or down. So that's just something to think about there. Um, don't forget about setting a timer. You could buy a cheap timer off Amazon or even at the dollar store for like a cooking timer and you just set that timer or the timer on your watch if you have it. And that is great just to make sure you're not standing or sitting for too long and you can get moving. Walk during your lunch breaks or if you are in an office building, go up and down the steps a couple times. Monitor your heart rate and check those things. If you're unfamiliar with that, we could certainly help you. And do some simple stretches like near your desk. Just get up, move around a little bit. Keep those arms flex flexible. For those who type a lot, do those wrist stretches to do that okay and we're going to cover some things uh towards the end of this video here shortly of other things that you can do that are helpful um walk up and down uh hills or even the stairs like i talked about if you have hills outside of your office for a little bit more of a challenge um, all these things to get up and move is really really key as far as that goes um, you could just stand up and simply reposition yourself or, um, some people don't think about this, but I know when I go to a store, sometimes I'll park at the closest parking spot, but other times I'll park at the furthest parking spot, believe it or not. And I'll just use that time just to walk in, um, just get your heart rate, get you moving a little bit, get you loosened up. So, uh, this is helpful too. So say you're working in the office and there's two water coolers, go to the farther one, utilize that. Uh, take a quick walk outside, get some fresh air. Sometimes the air inside is stagnant um, and just uh, uh, you get so tired and dreary. But if you get up and get your body moving and get those juices uh, kind of flowing in those joints and lubricated, it does you really well. And then a key thing a lot of us forget about is don't forget to hydrate. So this isn't coffee. I'm talking a lot. So this is water. So utilize water or anything non-caffeine related because it will help keep you hydrated and restore some of those vital nutrients into your body. So try to avoid sodas and, and highly caffeinated drinks if at all possible, all right? So at home, there's a lot of different stretches and techniques that you can do. And we have a whole list of those that we can share with you and your team for ways that you could basically prevent work-related injuries, minimize the length that someone is out due to a work-related injury, and last but not least, cost-effective ways to make modifications so that your employees are happy, are productive, efficient, and are well taken care of or maintained. So again, there's tons of different stretches and mobility type things that people can use. Um, we're always open to questions and anything that you may have. And one last thing I wanna share is, we here at Kali Physical Therapy and Rehab do provide these workshops with little tips such as these things for absolutely free. We're happy to schedule one with your human resources department, with you if you're the owner and you're seeing this, or with whomever you basically rely on to set things up for your safety-based things. Sometimes you can even utilize us for safety-based components. Uh, maybe they can get hours for that or credits. But the bottom line is it's absolutely free. All you need to do is call our main office at 570-208-2787 and say, hey, I will be interested in signing up for one of those free ergonomic workshops. Uh, I'm wondering if you come and share that information with us and we'd be more than happy to do that for you and provide you with some helpful information for you, your staff and your team so that you can be safer, so that you could be more productive and you could be just happier in general, enjoying what you do and not struggling to get out of bed and go to work every day. So if you have any other questions or you like any other information, feel free to give us a call. Again, it's 570-208-2787 
or feel free to go to our website at callypt.net, that's C-A-W-L-E-Y-P-T.net, for tons of useful resources on there, including eBooks, including blog posts on various conditions and injuries, and we are here to help in any way that we can. Uh, thanks so much for watching this video and for sharing uh, a little bit of your time with us. And uh, we look forward to talking to you or hearing from you. Have a great day and thank you.